Hello, my name is David Fayer. Today is Saturday, February the 8th, 2014, and I'm doing a uh, <clears throat> pre-launch due diligence report for the uh, Juicing for Fat Loss TV um, ClickBank product that's just going online. Yeah, I've been doing a bunch of these lately, so uh, I'm, um, I'm going to make this one public so people can see uh, the, um, <clears throat> the type of data that you can go through if you're an affiliate. Uh, so you know what type of uh, products are good to mail for. So here's the thing about affiliates that resell uh, ClickBank products is if I'm an affiliate, <clears throat> I have a certain amount of marketing bandwidth that I can use with my mailing list. Marketing bandwidth is the amount of times I can contact my list before they start leaving in droves or just ignoring what I send. So for example, if I send you know, three or four or five email uh, to my list every day, and those are all hard pitches with zero information, then my list is going to um, <clears throat> disappear overnight, and my uh, wife, kids, and pets are all going to be skinny, uh, along with me. So if you'd like to uh, have some fast fat loss, then you can uh, be a uh, ClickBank affiliate and mail for the wrong products. <laughs> <laughs> the forced starvation diet will help you lose weight. <clears throat> so if I'm a affiliate and I have a list uh, and I am <clears throat> considering say 10 products that I'm going to mail for uh, and I'm going to so here's the way marketing works is that after the seventh contact at contact number seven that's when 80 percent of my income comes in so I know that when I mail for something, I can't just mail for juicing for fat loss once. I have to mail seven times to get the majority of my income out of that uh, uh, marketing campaign. <clears throat> so that said, if I mail, um, uh, if I send one email a week, 52 divided by seven, that's only seven and a half uh, products and actually counting for holidays that's really only seven products I can promote in an entire year uh, and do effectively in other words if I mail for a different product once a week uh, for 52 weeks then I'm gonna walk away from 80 percent of my entire yearly income so seven times so that means that I'm gonna have to pick the um, <clears throat> Clickbank product that I know is going to uh, generate the most amount of income and so here is the due diligence reports that I've been generating for affiliates that are doing this type of research to answer the single question is this product a good product to mail for uh, yes or no so uh, let's uh, start through the process here um, so here is the sales page using for fat loss and, and we'll just we'll just take a look at um, <clears throat> just the the page in general and I'm scrolling through here and at least for me I can already tell you this is uh, way way too long um, I mean I personally if I looked at this I I wouldn't mail for it uh, because there's just too much stuff um, so all right, independent of that, uh, I think the sales page requires a good bit of work uh, before, you know, moving on with the project. And let's just take a look at the technical uh, features of this site and see if it'll actually support a uh, launch mailing. So let's say if I have, um, you know, a list of um, uh, a million people and, and I'm going to promote this product, is that going to be a, a useful uh, activity for me to do with my list? So let's say the sales page was perfect and I looked at the sales page and I said, yep, that's great. And then I'm going to look at the uh, ClickBank listing and it says uh, it's a 50% 50, 50 payout. So um, that's good. Whoops. Do, 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 do. Come back up here. Uh, let's see. So... Uh, that's 50% and there's no price listed there of what the initial sale are oh, right because they haven't done the launch yet so that means we're gonna have to go down here and figure out 50% of what uh, okay so you get everything for $47 
All right, so right off, I know that um, uh, my payout as an affiliate is uh, $23.50. All right, so the number that I'm looking at is $23.50. <clears throat> All right, and let's say that I've got a list of uh, a million people and I've uh, cultivated my list so that it's uh, a fairly high drawing list and let's say that I can uh, imagine that I'm going to get um, uh, I, the mailings I'm going to do are going to generate um, uh, spikes of 1% uh, uh, of my list visiting um, in a very short period of time because I've got my list trained well so that as soon as I mail because of uh, scarcity I use in my mail there's going to be a deluge of traffic so let's say 1 million which is not a uh, large list. I mean, some people have just huge lists. So that's 10,000 people. So that means that the, there's a potential of uh, 10,000 people <clears throat> uh, visiting um, potentially simultaneously at the same time. So um, let's take a look and see if that's going to work. So if, the, if those uh, visitors visited simultaneously, um, then you know I'd know that uh, you know based on my percentage say my percentage was 10% uh, out of the 1% that visited um, pretty simple math uh, one times, three times uh, pretty simple math uh, every mailing would net me um, uh, 23,500 so you know, twenty-three thousand bucks. That's pretty good. So now let's see if this uh, let's see if this site can actually um, function under that type of uh, traffic load. That's the big question. The primary question that I get from um, affiliates uh, asking about which product is a correct product to um, uh, to choose to mail for is very simple. If I mail for this product. Will the people I send to this site actually see a web page, or will they see a white page, or an HTML, or a, an HTTP, an Apache web server error? Because a visitor has to see a page before anything else can happen. So that's the primary question. A lot of a, a big affiliates have, have figured out now that people with slow websites or broken websites, which don't show up properly in um, uh, browsers, um, dramatically reduce their um, uh, profits. So first off, let's check, uh, let's take a look at this page and see what the web page speed is. And this is a little site I put up, what's my uh, WordPress speed or WP speed. Uh, because most people don't have command line access to their machines and they have a hard time logging in and running the tool. So um, <clears throat> here's the number. The number is uh, 28 visitors, uh, 20, 28 requests per second will work on this site. So I know right away that if 10,000 people visit, then 10,000 uh, minus 28 is 99. 172 visitors are going to see a white page or a uh, HT or a, an Apache error. So right off, right out of the chute, I would nix this product. I wouldn't mail for it because I would know right away that um, something like, um, well, it's going to be over 99% of all the traffic I send there will see a white page of death. So I know that this is a zero revenue proposition. So that being said, um, let's see how to fix this. So here's an example of a site that's properly tuned. Um, uh, do, 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 uh, fast SEO hosting is the site I've just put online. Um, this site runs at 4,926 requests a second, and the juicing for fat loss runs at 27. So the difference between 28 requests a second and almost 5,000. So here's the thing, if I took the Juicing for Fat Loss website and all, all, this, all these guys did was take their website and host it on one of my servers, their um, throughput speed would go up um, at, to crazy levels. So here's an example, let's see what um, shrinkyourdress.com 
So shrinkyourdress.com was a buddy of mine that um, <clears throat> was in a pre-launch stage, and he did. Uh, he had me do an analysis of his of his website, and he um, his website was running at 12 requests a second. And all we did, no coding changed. We just took a backup of his site, moved it onto one of my servers, and it went from 12 requests a second to almost 5,900 requests a second. So the first thing that you have to fix if you're um, um, uh, selling a product on ClickBank is you have to fix this number. This number really has to be over a thousand, and preferably over four or five thousand. <clears throat> so if you've got a ClickBank product or you're vetting ClickBank products to mail for, the first number to look at is this because that tells you how many people are actually going to see a page uh, of content and how many people are going to see nothing. And here's why this is important is that uh, Akamai, the, um, the big um, you know, global CDN people that have been in business, they were probably one of the first CDNs, uh, they did some research here recently that said that uh, <clears throat> If a, if a page takes um, uh, more than, uh, I can't remember if what the abandonment was. Um, there was another, another person that did the abandonment. Um, it was something like uh, if a page takes more than uh, two seconds to, to load, then something like 30% uh, of all people abandon the page instantly and never come back. And um, any page that takes longer than two seconds to um, paint, the repeat uh, revisit rate drops by 80%. So um, you know, if somebody takes a look at a page, it takes a look at a page. A lot of times, they'll bookmark that page to go back and look at it later. And if it takes less than, um, or if it takes greater than two seconds to paint that page, they just won't go back. So we'll we'll check that two second number here in a minute too. So the first number that these guys just absolutely must fix is this, or any smart affiliate would never mail for this product. Um, and the easy way to fix that is you just have to host with somebody who knows how to, to tune servers. That's the only fix. Uh, so let's take a look at the actual um, structure of the website now. Let's see, webpagetest.org. Um, well, actually, let's do this first. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's take a look at this sales page here and see if once once the page um, paints, or once the once a browser downloads the page, what's what, what's the likelihood a browser will actually be able to generate a page so that somebody can see it? Now, here's what I mean by that. Um, just because you write a piece of HTML don't mean, and you look at it in a browser on a given day, don't mean anybody else is going to see the same thing you see if there are any errors and warnings. So that this number should be zero. Zero, zero. Zero errors, zero warnings for HTML. Um, <clears throat> you just have to do that. Because when you have errors like this, like, see, here's a bunch of uh, errors that have to do with positioning that are just freaking broken. And the H group tag no longer even exists. Uh, most browsers will flag you as a spammer, or a lot of search engines will flag you as a spammer if you're using old style uh, H groups. So, rule of thumb is that <clears throat> if you'd like to write browser neutral HTML, in other words, browser neutral, meaning that it will show up as you expect in uh, at least show up something in every browser and usually show up uh, what you think it should show up in every browser you must have zero errors zero warnings in your HTML um, <clears throat> CSS um, you know that's a whole different can of worms there is a CSS validator too I would guess that since this site has so many HTML errors there's gonna be freaking no hope for CSS errors um, <clears throat> Now, actually, not all that many CSS errors. These could easily be fixed and gotten rid of. Uh, so, funny thing about this page is that the CSS is in way better shape than the HTML. All right, so uh, we know that there are two problems. One, the site's going too slow. 99% uh, of a large mailing will see a white screen. And uh, even if that was fixed, a lot of people, because there's so many um, HTML errors, 
right here. It's going to be anybody's guess has that how that looks in any web browser. And also, what this also means is that even if you checked every web browser today, every new version of every web browser that comes out makes coding changes. <clears throat> so, for example, the latest version of Chrome came out here a couple of weeks ago, the latest stable version, and they fixed a bunch of um, hacks that they had in there for very old web pages that were poorly constructed and a bunch of people's web pages started showing up uh, as white pages. In other words, they could <coughs> they could see their web pages in uh, Firefox and Internet Exploder, and I do mean Exploder, and um, Safari and um, Opera, all the other major browsers work fine, except uh, Chrome, the pa their pages were coming up as white pages because of syntax errors. So, second thing you got to fix is syntax errors. So now let's take a look at uh, webpagetest.org, and what this little gizmo is going to do for us is um, tell us some really interesting data about the page. And what I do is I choose a test location that has, um, if you look here, there are all these test locations. I choose one that supports uh, Firefox. <clears throat> and then I go in the menu here and choose Firefox uh, because Firefox is one of the best standard compliant browsers. And if you run all your code through Firefox, then you pretty much have a good idea of... Um, <clears throat> of how to um, how your uh, page is going to uh, look in other browsers and work with other browsers. Oh, this is pretty ugly here. See this number here? 21 seconds, 22 seconds. That's how long this page is taking. Um, which we already knew was um, you know going to be pretty bad because uh, you can only see 28 re uh, requests a second throughput on this site. Let's take a look and see if there's anything we can fix here. Okay, first thing, this is a freaking killer. If I was an affiliate, I would never, ever, ever mail for anything that took 18.7 seconds, way, way over the two-second mark. Um, I think that over something like seven or eight seconds, um, the latest research shows that um, there's 100% abandonment after, I, I think it's the eight-second mark. So... Um, Rule of thumb is this mailing for a large mailing list would generate zero dollars. Uh, if there's any money generated, um, it would be a fluke. And so if I had, you know, if I was an affiliate and I was looking at eight different uh, products to mail for and six of them gave me numbers like this, I would throw those out and just continue doing due diligence on the other two. So first view is 18 seconds. Let's see how to fix this. Um, uh, first thing is what you're looking for up here is all A scores on these first ones and an X in CDN. Never, ever, ever use a CDN. CDNs only fix uh, badly broken, slow websites. That's the only the only thing CDNs are is a band aid. It's like a remedial agent. It's like using radiation for cancer. It doesn't cure the cancer. You got to. It affects the symptom instead of the root cause. So using a CDN affects symptoms of slow websites. It never affects root causes. Um, so if I look down through here, the first thing I see in this waterfall here, this the waterfall shows um, you know how objects are being returned. The first thing is this red line here. That means that this thing, um, uh, whatever it is, this file doesn't even exist, so it'll never return and an, an anything. So every whenever this file is hit, it just uh, blocks the whole process. So whatever the heck this thing is, that's missing off the side. Oh, it's a, a font. So you know this. Put this freaking font on the website first off, and it'll it'll it won't help help the site overall. I still wouldn't mail for it, but at least it'll get rid of this uh, blocker here. This red means that the object doesn't ex doesn't exist, and so how, wherever this font was used, you'll see it in your back end working on things. But when you publish it, uh, whatever font that is ain't going to show up, and it's anybody's guess what that means for for the sales page. Um, let's see the. I'm looking down through here. See most of these. Oh yeah, because that's. That's another problem with using uh, sales pages like uh, these guys have used with those huge images is that since everything's images, unless you really freaking know what you're doing with images, you're going to just be uh, have a broken website. So since these are all um, 
are for the most part images. Um, I mean, there's a couple of fixes. We'll look at GT metrics here and make sure that the image uh, dimensions are all uh, correctly set. So, um, yeah, so the reason this may be taking 18.76 seconds to um, paint is that uh, because it's primarily images, the image uh, dimensions may not be set, which is height and width. Um, and well, actually that's not going to matter either because they're mainly images. So the problem with an image heavy uh, system like this is that the person actually has to see the image where a text system like um, if we take a look at um, if you take a look at this website uh, this is just something I threw together to talk about the, um, um, the uh, hosting that I've taken public here recently. Um, all this text here uh, paints extremely fast and if we go back to um, these guys website see these are all images so there's no text here I don't think let's see here okay so there is some text uh, but it's gonna look really funky without the background fonts and without the the background images so um, <clears throat> I mean the rule of thumb the way to fix this type of site is um, a couple of things make sure all the image dimensions which are height and width of images are set because that'll make pages paint way way faster the other thing is to make sure image co images are all compressed which they aren't that's bad um, so one of the services that I offer for my um, hosting clients is I've got a script that runs that uh, I can run at the top of a, uh, a directory of an entire website and it'll go and find every image on a website and then um, go through and uh, take that image and compress it uh, sometimes hundreds or thousands of uh, times with different tools and find the the highest definition version of the the image uh, and the highest quality and the smallest file size and that's the one it will keep and so um, uh, that that's really what has to happen here is to run that and then compress transfer the um, uh, the transfer compression for the actual HTML is off right now which is very ugly uh, that's a that's just a, a very badly tooled uh, web server uh, configuration. So these two things are for me is less than a, a 10 minute fix and that 10 minutes part of that uh, is going to be just reviewing images to make sure the compression worked on a few of them. So um, these two are easy to fix. Um, having all these images ain't easy to fix. Um, the typical way to fix this uh, is to use what's called a sprite library and a sprite library means that you collect all these images together into one image file and there are tools to do this you don't actually do this manually you run a tool on these images and it takes all the images and stacks them together in one huge image and gives you a um, a library of access points into that that says where an image starts and its height and width and so instead of having uh, you know most of these transfers uh, are uh, images so instead of having you know say 80 or 90 image transfers that all have to run at once there's a single image transfer that starts here and might run to you know someplace over here instead of way over here so maybe it takes uh, three seconds or four seconds to load all the images instead of 18. Um, it still doesn't fix the side but at least it makes it faster it's a band-aid situation so now let's take a look at uh, GT metrics and see what GT metrics can tell us about this site. Uh, GT metrics, we're just going to look at the page speed stuff, um, uh, the, the uh, Google page speed tool rather than the Yahoo Y slow tool. They're very similar and the page speed tool I think gives a little bit more easily understood information.
All right. So, um, I mean, all overall, it's a pretty good score. Um, here, this right here tells us one reason that um, this site is loading so so slow. Um, the, it's an F score zero. There not there's not a single image dimension specified uh, in this entire site. And so what that means is an image um, width means that when you uh, have your IMG tag, there's actually a attribute in there that says width equal pixel high, uh, pixel wide, height equal pixel high. So it's the actual height and width though. So specifying image uh, dimensions will help speed this page up. Another very bad problem is um, if you look at these uh, uh, specify character set early, um, so this page, uh, it looks like uh, avoid character set in meta tag. So the easiest way to show this is um, let, let's go to back to the website here and I'll show you what this means. Um, so see this, um, this right here. So um, meta tag char set equals UTF-8. Um, that's setting the uh, character set, which is the language. I mean, that could be Hebrew or Chinese or uh, British English or um, American English. Uh, there are all sorts of char sets. UTF-8 is by far the most common these days because it's a, a character set encoding that allows um, almost every language to be rendered using the same character set. Here's the problem though. In stupidly badly broken browsers like um, most all, every Internet Exploder, maybe not 10, maybe they fixed it in 10 finally, but all the other Internet Explorers, or Internet Explorers, I apologize, from Windows, uh, or that live on Windows, have this very, very ugly bug in that if the character set is set inside the HTML, then uh, the browser uh, doesn't begin rendering the text until it actually has the HTML downloaded. It's just stupid as all get out. Um, and I don't really understand why that is. I, I just think it's the, uh, you know, whoever wrote the browser is technically incompetent. So the way that you fix this is you take this out. You never have that on any page and you set this character set instead in your uh, HTTP headers. So here's what I mean by that. And again, this is, should be all fixed on a normal web server. On a correctly tuned web server, this should just work. So if I say curl head and I put in this sales page, um, I look through, all, see all these, these are all the headers that come back that are associated with this page. Um, and now you notice there's nothing that says anything about character set type. And if I go to look at the fast um, uh, hosting setup I've got, see this right here, content type text slash HTML and char set UTF-8. Here it says content type text HTML with no char set. So the fix for uh, this problem, to fix this problem, which will make this uh, site run uh, way, way faster in uh, rendering in Internet Exploders is to change, uh, remove the char set from um, all the web pages and turn it on as it's supposed to be correctly turned on inside the web server. All right, so um, uh, last thing um, just to mention for um, uh, the, um, the actual uh, guys that are running this website is the thing to keep in mind here also since you're uh, breaking the um, sub-second speed rule. Sub-second speed rule says that your uh, whatever site you've got running, whether it's WordPress or uh, Joomla, Drupal, or a static uh, site, whatever you're running, better darn well serve those pages sub-second. In other words, in less than one second or very very close to one second and no, absolutely never ever ever greater than two seconds uh, because you're going to lose the majority of your income. So I would say that um, you know whether this launch is a success or not based on the content and the, I haven't gone through the um, 
the product tree inside ClickBank. The product tree is uh, upsells, downsells, cross-sells. Um, however, uh, I can tell that um, you know the majority of visitors that come to the site will never even get that far because they will abandon. So the the first step in ensuring this uh, product launch actually gets to the place where people can take some action is to fix the um, um, the checklist would be uh, number one is site speed and number two is uh, HTML uh, syntax all the syntax that's broken um, another trick that I use um, I'm gonna pause this and find a file so I can share it with you here's a um, here's a little um, uh, test website that I've been working on that's eventually going to turn into a WordPress theme and the intention with this um, particular uh, test is to create uh, web pages that have um, both HTML and CSS that validate 100% in other words zero error zero warnings for HTML and zero error zero warnings for CSS and the way I do that is here's the link is davidfavor.com slash info slash grid and the way I do that is by using these three scripts right here and I, I'd recommend that um, you add these to um, especially um, this one right here modernizer you add that to every one of your um, uh, web pages because what that will do is modernizer, modernizer normalizes code so that it works in every browser so for example if you have a box with rounded corners that happens to work in Firefox or uh, Internet Exploder 8, it doesn't mean it'll work in Internet Exploder 10 or Chrome or Opera or you know uh, any of the you know 35 different versions of Firefox that might be running out there. So you can try to uh, write um, really complicated HTML and CSS to take into consideration all these different types of browsers or you can use modernizer to normalize browsers and prefix free to, to normalize CSS so that there's never uh, if you remember back from our CSS errors there were these uh, tags that said things like uh, uh, let's see If you notice, see this uh, Moz box sizing here? That's what's called a, a vendor prefix, which is this oops, this uh, Moz right here. In other words, the true CSS uh, attribute is box sizing. That's the HTML5 attribute. Um, and this Moz WebKit, uh, let's see, there should be a dash O in here also for um, uh, picking up uh, any type of uh, Safari or excuse me any type of um, uh, Opera uh, browser also those are missing uh, the the problem is that all these vendor prefixes uh, can change time to time and they may disappear in browsers and may change the they, they don't really match any type of standard so you never know if they're gonna work or not the easiest thing is to leave all these out and use this little gizmo here, a little simple script, prefix free, which um, what it does is it uh, walks through all your CSS inside your browser after the web page is loader, loaded and figures out uh, if um, a particular browser version requires a CSS prefix that's a vendor prefix. So say for example you're running a Firefox browser that needs this um, uh, Moz box sizing to properly work then prefix free will handle putting that into your code um, and I won't go into how that happens but that just handles that so what that what that means is that you you write um, if you use uh, jQuery and prefix free and modernizer you write your HTML5 code to match the HTML5 standard and the CSS code you write matches the CSS3 standard and by using these scripts that just works magically in every browser and independent of how that works it's way easier than you trying to figure out you know uh, if 
you know, uh, a uh, end user visitor is going to be seeing a white page of death or uh, your actual content. All right, so uh, that, kind of, that pretty much uh, wraps up our um, our uh, conversation about this uh, website. Uh, last thing that I would just say is. Um, uh, Here, here's a um, here's an example of uh, an old uh, Brendan Bruchard website, which I think is one of the cleanest uh, sites ever. So this uh, this site right here is what's called a single step site. In other words, it's it has one action, which is you know it's kind of like the the uh, you know yeah I mean you kind of have to do that if you're working with ClickBank and um, for me as a busy person, the likelihood of me reading this whole thing ain't very likely. Um, uh, Bruchard figured out long ago that um, <clears throat> if you keep things simple, um, uh, rule of thumb in marketing, the confused mind always says no, and you've got a much better likelihood if somebody can look at something and get everything in one page and make a choice, yay or nay. Because you'll get uh, the the more people that would have said yay, you're going to get, and the people that say nay, you're going to not going to get them anyway. So uh, I, I would consider split testing between that long page sales copy and then do a uh, a single page like this that had um, uh, your sell button right here, and then had uh, right down here. Uh, a list of all the stuff that you were going to sell and I would split test to see which one pulls better because you never know I mean maybe the long version will pull better maybe not only way to tell is you got to test so anyway that's a um, that's a uh, quick run through of the uh, uh, juicing for life or juicing for fat loss TV sales page <laughs>